Let's continue our talk about face reading, cholecystitis and gallstones. Cholecystitis is an inflammatory disease of the gallbladder that has various causes, which is classified into acute and chronic cholecystitis. Gallstones result from certain changes in the comp composition of bile, leaving the cholesterol to harden in the bile and form stones. The onset of acute cholecystitis cholecystitis is manifested as sudden pain of the upper right abdomen, a feverish sensation, chills, nausea, and vomiting. The symptoms of gallstones are episodes of abdominal pain and acute inflammation. Cholecystitis is caused by bacterial infections in the gallbladder or round worms in the intestines. Gallstones are caused by the gradual calcification of cholesterol in the bile. As seen in the picture, light yellow spots appear on both sides of the nose. So for face reading, when the nose looks like a gallbladder in shape and light yellow spots appear on both sides of the nose, it often suggests diseases associated with the gallbladder. When nodules the size of millet grains appear in the pancreatic and gallbladder zones of the ears, it suggests gallstones. The therapeutic methods would be daily care is very crucial to the recovery of patients with cholecystitis and gallstones. Consume a proper diet and balance the emotions to protect liver and gallbladder. The dietary advice would be to adjust your diet and control the intake of foods high in fat and cholesterol, such as fatty meat, animal offal, and egg yolks. Do not drink alcohol and avoid pungent and fried foods. Exercise. People who work indoors and people with obesity should do more in outdoor, outdoor activities such as running, walking, and playing ball games. Emotional adjustments. Emotional disorders can easily lead to neurological disorders and cholestasis. Stasis. It is important to be optimistic and keep an open mind, which is conducive to the improvement of the condition. Medicinal diet therapy. Horn silk and clam soup. Horn silk would be 50 grams, ginger about 15 grams, clam meat about 150 grams, and some salt. Wash and slice the clam meat and ginger. Put the ingredients together with the corn silk in an earthenware pot. Add some water. Simmer for an hour on low he heat and season with salt. The soup can clear away heat and invigorate the gallbladder and is therefore suitable for people with cholecystitis and gallstones. Corn silk can accelerate bile excretion. As seen in the figure above, we must uh, um, massage the liver 14 point, which has an effect of soothing, soothing the liver, promoting qi, clearing blood stasis, and resolving stagnation. It is mainly used to treat diseases such as cholecystitis and bloating in the sternum area. Use your thumb to press knead the liver 14 the liver 14 point for three to five minutes once daily until a distension is produced. Thank you for your attention. Interviewing color of menstrual blood. The color of the menstrual blood varies slightly during the period. In general, it is usually dark red, being lighter at the beginning, deep red in the middle, and pinkish at the end of the period. The following are the main areas of questioning with regard to color. Dark red or bright red menstrual blood is blood heat, pale, blood deficiency, blackish, very dark, stasis of blood, purplish is full cold, brownish like soya bean sauce and dilute, empty cold, scarlet red, empty heat in the blood. For pale menstrual blood, we have the different patterns. Blood deficiency, you'll have, uh, aside from being pale, there will be scanty periods, dull pale complexion, dizziness, pale tongue, choppy pulse. For chi deficiency pattern, uh, there will also be associated heavy bleeding, shortness of breath, tiredness, pale complexion, pale tongue, empty pulse. Spleen and kidney yang deficiency. Aside from pale and dilute menstrual blood, there will be tiredness, loose stools, poor appetite, backache, dizziness, feeling cold, pale tongue, weak pulse. For the pattern, damp phlegm in the uterus, the menstrual blood is pale and sticky, 
with excessive vaginal discharge, feeling of heaviness, infertility, swollen tongue with sticky coating, slippery pulse. For purple menstrual blood, we have the following patterns. Cheese stagnation and blood stasis in the uterus. The blood is purple with dark clots, abdominal distension and pain, purple tongue, wiry pulse. For blood stasis with heat in the uterus, reddish purple menstrual blood, purple clots, abdominal pain, mental restlessness, thirst, reddish purple tongue, wiry rapid pulse. For blood stasis with cold in the uterus, the menstrual blood is bluish purple with small dark stringy clots, abdominal pain, feeling cold, painful periods alleviated by the application of heat, bluish purple tongue, wiry tight slow pulse. For blood deficiency with cold in the uterus, menstrual blood is pale purplish with uh, scanty periods, painful periods alleviated by application of heat, feeling cold, dizziness, blurred vision, pale tongue with white coating and choppy pulse. Thank you for your attention. Let's continue with the hand tie yin long meridian with the acupuncture point through the or cubic marsh, or this is long five. Long five or the outside marsh or foot marsh or ghost pole or ghost endurance. It is the water point of the long meridian. It is also the sedation point and the hussy point of the long meridian. Cubit marsh refers to this point being one foot or cubit away from the first position of the pulse at the wrist. A marsh is a place of water and joyous fertile life. This point can bring malleability to an overly rigid mind and spirit or reinforce perseverance. Good for patients who are bogged down, their grief overflowing and swamping their spirit. If there is agitation from immune deficiency, this point might be applicable to help restore calm and bring refreshment to a part official. Agitation, even walking fast, doesn't suit the lung. Its strength lies in inner concentration. Outside marsh will bathe and restore calm to the receiver of chi. This point opens the water passages and thus benefits the bladder. The lungs are said to govern the regulation of the waterways, bearing water down to the bladder and kidney and keeping the bladder free of accumulations of water and problems with urination. The well-being of the lung and kidney are intimately related. They are said to be mutually engendering. The lungs govern chi, an odd upper source of water, whereas the kidney is the root of the chi. On the Shang cycle, water is the child element of metal. This point regulates and tonifies the lung chi. It stimulates the descending of lung chi. It clears heat from the lungs, expels phlegm from the lungs, moistens dryness, relaxes the tendons of the arms, and dreams of metal objects in water are said to indicate this point. For its indications, it is for retention of phlegm in the lungs in combination with heat, that is yellow phlegm and thirst, or it is also for cold in white phlegm and chilliness. It is also indicated when yin on body fluids are deficient after fever, or there is dryness of the skin or throat, this point might be used. It's also for pain in the arm or elbow, especially if the arm cannot be raised. As the water point and one which regulates the water passages, lung five can be used to expel or dry out excessive phlegm or fluid or dampness in the lungs. Conversely, if there is too little water present, the patient may feel parched with a dry cough bronchitis with which mucus or for rigid in mind or spirit. It is helpful when the patient is depressed, weeping, or sorrowful. It uh, dreams of metal objects with in water can indicate the need for this point. Thank you for your attention. Let's discuss differential diagnosis, Western and Chinese medicine, the mental emotional conditions. Number one, uh, stemming from anxiety and phobias, stress, twitching, trembling, muscle tension, headache, 
sweating, palpitation, rapid heart rate, slow self-esteem, a low self-esteem, dry mouth, difficulty swallowing, abdominal pain. Number two, various psychiatric syndromes. Letter A stemming from paranoid personality disorder. Paranoia, ex expectations of being exploited by others, inability to collaborate, poor self-image, social isolation, detachment, hostility. Letter B stemming from schizoid personality disorder. Avoids close relationship even with family, avoids social activities, avoids interpersonal contact, appears aloof, detached. Letter C, borderline personality disorder, intense, unstable relationship, alternating between extreme fear of abandonment, inappropriate anger, self-mutilation, feeling empty, bird, bored, intolerance of solitude, impulsive behavior. Letter B, obsessive compulsive personality disorder, Perfectionism, compulsive rituals, preoccupation with details, rules, lists, reluctance to allow others to do things, restricted impression of affection, lack of gener generosity, inability to throw away. Number three, stemming from learning difficulties, example, autistic spectrum disorder. Inability to hold conversation, slow development of language, tendency to repeat words or memorize passages, communication with gestures, lack of empathy, withdraw, does not make friends, avoid, may avoid eye contact. Number four, uh, stemming from conditions which causes sticks, example, Tourette syndrome, vocalization, runs, throat clearing, abdominal or diaphragmatic contractions, facial grimacing, excessive blinking, rapid recurrent movement of the arms and legs. Number five, uh, other mental emotional problems, uh, psychosomatic disorder, eating, sleeping disorders, organic mental syndromes. Chinese differentiation, mental emotional conditions, diagnostic questioning according to number one, five, Faces pathology, anger, frustration, resentment, mood swings, feeling trapped, inability to move forward, see future, timidity and assertiveness, over controlling, tunnel vision, inflexibility, that is wood, fixation, agitation, lack of joy, poor communication, hurt, rejection, defensiveness, inappropriate laughter. Mania, self-righteousness, paranoia, that is fire. Oppressive, anxiety, sorrow, grief, lack of self-worth, pointlessness, inability to let go, detachment, criticalness, confusion, arrogance, guilt, rigidity, that is mental. Repetitive thinking, inability to resolve, and clarity, worry, speed, Insecurity, obsessiveness, lack of sympathy, overly solicitous, that is earth. Dread, dread, fear, mental debility, feeling overwhelmed, can't cope, phobias, helplessness, secretiveness, suspicion, recklessness, manipulative, stubbornness, that is water. Number two, organ pathology engendered by emotion. Joy slackens heart chi. Anger causes liberty to rise or stagnate. Worry binds spleen chi. Sorrow, anxiety disperses lung chi. Stag stagnate chi in the chest. Fright scatters chi. Fear uh, precipitates descends kidney chi. Number three functions of heart, mind, that is the chin. The thinking, slow and dull, memory, consciousness, thought, perceptions, insight, cognition, perceiving, conceiving, responding to stimuli, sleep, mind disturbance causes restless sleep, intelligence, heart, mind, essence, the wisdom, applying knowledge critically, wisely, the ideas, 
mind governs ideas, goals, life, purpose. Number four, sang poop pattern. For the excess, heart, liver, fire, blazing, stomach, stomach, phlegm, fire, stagnation of liver, lung, heart, chi, heart, liver, blood, stasis, phlegm, heat, harassing the heart. For the deficiency, heart, blood deficiency, heart, kidney, liver, gene deficiency with empty heat, heart, liver, chi deficiency, heart, and gallbladder deficiency. Thank you for your attention. Let us now discuss the basic concept, formation, and physiological actions of blood. Blood is a red liquid laden with rich nutrients and flowing in the vessels. It is one of the basic substances that constitute the body and maintain its vital activities. In order to carry out its normal actions, it has to flow within the vessels. If blood circulation is impeded or there is bleeding from the vessels, its normal actions will be impaired and blood insufficiency can become a cause of disease. Blood originates from two sources, essence of drink and food and kidney essence. Blood derives from nutritive chi and body fluids. These are both generated from the essential substances that principally the spleen and stomach extract from drink and food after digesting them. In that sense, the spleen and the stomach are sources of blood. Prolonged inappropriate diet or impairment of stomach and spleen functions can lead to blood deficiency. Next is kidney essence. Essence stored in the kidney generates bone marrow, and marrow in turn is transformed into blood. In CM, essence and blood can be transformed into each other. In general, if kidney essence is ample, the liver has its nourishment and blood has its replenishment. If liver blood is ample, the kidney has its store and essence has its supply. Thus, it's said essence and blood have a common source. Now let us look at its physiological actions. Blood flows in the blood vessels. In the interior, it reaches the xanthu viscera. In the exterior, the skin, muscles, tendons, and bones. It unceasingly nourishes and moistens the organs and tissues in the entire body, thereby maintaining their normal activities. This physiological state is reflected in a rosy and lustrous complexion, a well-developed and strong muscles, well-moistened skin and hair with sheen, and keen perception and agile movement. If blood is deficient, there may be dizziness, blurred vision, lusterless complexion, dry skin and hair, and numbness of the limbs. Blood is also the material basis for mental activities. If blood and chi are both abundant and smoothly flowing, then the mind is sharp, reception keen, and movement nimble. Abnormal circulation due to any cause like deficiency of blood, heat in the blood, or abnormal flow patterns can lead to mental disorder. In mild cases, there may be listlessness, insomnia, dream disturbed sleep, and restlessness. And in severe cases, there may be confusion, dementia, delirium, and coma. Blood circulates incessantly in the vessels throughout the body to supply nourishment to all the organs and tissues. Normal circulation of blood requires coordination and balanced circulation. The lung controls the entire body's chi and is the convergence of all the vessels. It assists the heart in promoting circulation. The spleen commands the blood flowing within the vessels and prevents extravasation. The liver stores blood and regulates the volume of blood in circulation. It also helps to keep blood flowing smoothly. It can be seen that the circulation of blood is accomplished jointly by the physiological actions of the heart, the lung, the spleen, and the liver. If the function of any of these organs is impaired, blood circulation may be affected. Such abnormalities as hemorrhage, poor circulation, or blood stasis may result. In addition, colder heat in the blood can directly influence the rate of blood circulation. Thank you so much for your attention. Let us now go to diagnosis according to Zhang Fu organ patterns. The topic is kidney indeficiency and heart indeficiency. Kidney indeficiency and heart indeficiency is a pattern also known as kidney and heart not harmonized because it reflects a disharmony in the fundamental balance between fire and water that these two organs are a resonance of. Water in the form of kidney yin should nourish heart yin and thereby control the heart's yang fire aspect. If kidney and heart yin are weak, there will be an imbalance between fire and water. As it is a deficiency condition, there will not be the same intense and aggressive signs that Shen is disturbed as when there is heart fire. When there is yin deficiency, Shen will be more unsettled than agitated. Heart and kidney yin deficiency can arise from the following etiological factors, such as aging, mental and physical overexertion, 
chronic illness, too little sleep, emotional stress, anxiety, shock, depression, sadness, too much sex, too much coffee, dietary factors, and medicine that are hot or spreading in their energy, chronic blood deficiency or heat conditions, and chronic kin deficiency conditions in other organs. The symptoms and signs are insomnia, mental unrest, dream disturbed sleep, anxiety, poor memory, the person talks quickly and a lot, restlessness, restless or nervous movements, dizziness, tinnitus, poor hearing, palpitations, lumbar soreness or weakness, dry stools, thin body, and the tongue will be thin and red that lacks coating. There's going to be red tongue tip and possibly crack in the surface of the tongue. The pulse will be fine or empty. The left cheek and tune positions may be weaker than the rest of the pulse, and the pulse may be rapid. The key symptoms are insomnia, palpitations, restlessness, night sweats, red tongue tip, and malar flush. The treatment principle is to nourish kidney and heart yin, control heat, and calm the shin. The acupuncture points to choose from are kidney 3, kidney 6, kidney 7, kidney 9, REN 4, REN 15, heart 5, heart 6, heart 7, bladder 15, bladder 23, and bladder 52. The needling technique to be used is toe defying. The explanation for the points are kidney 3, kidney 6, kidney 7, and kidney 9, REN 4, bladder 23, and bladder 52 nourish kidney yin. Whereas REN 15, heart 5, heart 6, heart 7, and bladder 15 nourish heart yin. Kidney indeficiency and heart indeficiency can be caused by the patterns of imbalance of kidney indeficiency and heart indeficiency and can result in blood heat, liver yin deficiency, and phlegm. Thank you so much for your attention. Disturbance of Qi Disturbance of Qi Activity This is a pathological condition in which failure in the movements of ascent, descent, exiting and entering of Qi has led to deregulation and abnormality in the functional activities of the entire body or of certain viscera. There are five main patterns. First, chi stagnation. Stagnation of chi results mainly from the passions being trapped internally, accumulation of phlegm and dampness, retention of food or stasis of blood, impedance of chi flow, whether regional or total, in turn affects the functions of viscera and meridians. Regional meridian blockage of chi movement often presents with pain and distension. In severe cases, there may be stasis of blood, retention of fluid, and accumulation of phlegm. Because the ascending action of the liver, the descending action of the lung, the raising action of the spleen, and the lowering action of the stomach are important in regulation of qi transformation, disturbance of the functions of these organs can lead to the abnormality of qi stagnation. Examples include stagnation of the lung qi, trapping of liver qi, and impedance of spleen and stomach qi. Second, counterflow of qi. This is the pathological state in which qi movement is disrupted and visceral qi rises abnormally. It results mainly from the passions or improper diet of cold or hot food and drinks or blockage by accumulated turbid phlegm. Counterflow of qi is mostly frequently seen in diseases affecting the lung, the stomach, and the liver. For example, if the lung loses its depuration function and its chi ascends, there may be coughing, hiccup, and labored breathing. If stomach chi fails to descend but ascends instead, there may be nausea, vomiting, or eructation and hiccup. If liver chi rises abnormally, there may be pain and pressure in the head, flushing of the face, inflamed eyes, and irritability. If passions cause liver chi to surge upward or liver chi rises because of rage, then blood may rise with liver chi and lead to hemoptysis, hematemesis, or even fainting from blockage of the orifices. Counterflow occurs mainly in illnesses of strength, but sometimes can happen in illness, illnesses of deficiency. For example, in deficiency of lung chi, depuration fails and the kidneys unable to receive chi can both cause lung chi to rise abnormally. Deficiency of stomach chi, hence the lowering function of the stomach, can also cause stomach chi to rise abnormally. Third, sinking chi sinking. In this condition, deficient chi is too weak to ascend, 
Consequently, its ability to maintain the internal organs in this in their locations are also weakened, resulting in their ptosis or prolapse. This occurs most commonly as a complication of qi deficiency. It can also occur in a patient with a weak constitution or a protracted illness or depletion of spleen qi so that clear yang cannot ascend and central qi sinks. In this condition, there may be ptosis of the stomach or of the kidney and, a, and prolapse of the uterus or rectum. Symptoms include distension and heaviness in the waist and abdomen, diarrhea, frequent urination, shortness of breath and lassitude, and a feeble voice. Qi blockage. This is a condition in which a turbid disease evil blocks the meridians or qi has become trapped. As a result, the entering exiting activities of qi become completely blocked and the clear orifices closed with consequent syncope or coma. Thus, sudden closure caused by turbid and unclean pathogens can precipitate syncope. In the course of an exogenous heat disease, extreme fever can also precipitate syncope. So can sudden mental trauma. These are all examples of obstruction of the exiting activity of qi. The fifth, qi collapse. This is a condition of massive loss of qi. It may result from genuine qi being overwhelmed by evil qi or genuine qi remaining in a weakened state so that qi cannot be conserved in the interior but escapes outward and becomes dissipated. It may also result from massive bleeding, profuse sweating, or other massive fluid loss during which qi escapes along with the blood or fluid. All these can lead to a sudden decline of all functional activities of the body. Thus, qi collapse is the main mechanism of many kinds of functional collapse. Thank you for your attention. Let's now proceed to epigastric pain with the patterns cold dampness. Epigastric pain indicates pain in the central upper abdominal area between the rhipoid process and the umbilicus. Although the pain may radiate towards the right or left costal margin, only if it starts in the epigastric area that is approximately over the stomach is it classified as epigastric pain. Now let's go to its etiology. Here is an illustration of the epigastric pain area. Now let's proceed to its etiology. First, the external pathogenic factors. Let's, have, uh, let's discuss about cold. External cold can invade the stomach directly by passing the skin and muscle energetic layers. As cold contracts, it causes an acute and severe epigastric pain, usually accompanied by vomiting. The tongue has a thick white coating and the pulse is tight. This is an acute condition. The simple questions in chapter 39 says, cold invades the stomach and intestines, blood cannot move, and the connecting channels are blocked and hence pain results. Uh, let's talk about dampness. External dampness can also invade the stomach directly. This may be combined with either cold or heat according to season. During the summer months, it is more likely to occur as damp heat. Dampness obstructs the descending of stomach chi and causes adult pain and nausea. It, is, it also causes a typical feeling of oppression and heaviness of the epigastrium. The tongue has a sticky coating, white or yellow, according to whether dampness combines with cold or heat, and the pulse is slippery. Dampness is more frequent cause than cold in acute stomach disorders, including food poisoning and many bacterial or viral infections affecting the stomach, manifesting with epigastric pain, fever, nausea, and vomiting. Now let's talk about diet. Diet is obviously the most important factor in stomach disorders. The stomach rots and ripens food. The spleen transforms and transports the refined food essence up towards the lungs, whilst the stomach sends the waste down to the intestines. 
The downward movement of the stomach chi is coordinated with the upward movement of the spleen chi. And the two together are absolutely crucial to ripen, transport, and transform food essences and waste in the middle burner. The stomach with its downward movement and the spleen with its upward movement are like crucial crossroads in the middle burner. In disease, chi easily flows in the wrong direction, and in case of the stomach, it may flow upwards, leading to nausea, vomiting, hiccup, or belching. The nature of the food and the condition in which it has been eaten very easily affect the stomach. We will consider the quantity of food, the nature of food, and the conditions of eating separately. Thank you for your attention.